everyone. My name is Marcin Ryański and I'm the CEO and co-founder of Remedo Labs, a spin-off uh, of the Poznan University of Technology in Poland. And we are a research and consulting company uh, focusing on wireless communications, uh, specifically 5G and beyond, and now also currently on Open Run. So our meeting today is on on ORAN architecture and use cases, where I'd like to touch upon several aspects of um, open run uh, as per ORAN Alliance um, definition. First of all, a few words about myself, and I've been involved in 5G development since uh, 2012, uh, where I've been a work packet leader for the EU funded project uh, 5G Now. And later I was working as a run architecture consultant as, uh, at uh, Huawei R&D office in Sweden. And I'm also a co-author of a book entitled From LTE to LTE Advanced Pro and 5G, published by Arte House um, two years ago. And I did my PhD on radio resource management uh, for LTE and, and 5G and specifically on traffic steering. So uh, that's also a use case that we are going to speak about today. Um, as Russell said, um, the slides will be available in, uh, let's say, 10 days um, when I'm back from, from my vacation. Um, also, uh, regarding the housekeeping rules, um, I tried to get to 45 minutes for the webinar as um, at a typical case, but I, it might be a little bit longer. So I, I will try to, to get to one hour, uh, no longer than that, but, but I will try to, to get a little bit shorter then. Okay, so let's get uh, down to the business. Um, here is our outline for today. We'll start with a little bit of introduction to sketch um, to sketch uh, and, and put a context of where we are. And then we are going to speak about the, the ORAN itself, what, what it is and what are the different, uh, let's say, entities and uh, also practicalities in terms of who is working on that. It will be a short overview, but, uh, but it will be there. Um, and then we'll get into, let's say, the meat, meaning the ORAN architecture, uh, where we are going to discuss the, um, let's say, uh, the blocks and uh, interfaces in between them and their roles. And then we also going to speak about some deployment scenarios and implementation aspects here. Um, the later section is about run intelligent controller or RIC. Um, that is the, the heart, let's say, of the system in terms of the radio resource management. Um, then we are going to speak about the ORAN use cases um, that the ORAN Alliance specifies. And then we are going, let's say, a little bit di deep dive into the traffic steering use case. And in that case, I'm going to discuss the, the things that are related to the uh, ORAN Alliance description of that use case and the practicalities and the different uh, in operation within the non-real-time RIC and near real-time RIC, um, the different messaging and the different parameters, and of course, um, the policies that uh, is, let's say, the important part of the, the ORAN uh, Alliance definition for the interaction between those. And then as a final point, we are going to see also um, uh, some, let's say, a toy scenario that we did in Remedo Labs discussing the XAP interactions um, to realize that specific use case. Uh, so we are going from, let's say, the big overview, then going down to the details and then also see some practical example to show what a why do we think that the ORAN uh, Alliance uh, definition and the ORAN as such, an open run, uh, is, is important. So that would be um, the outline. So let me <clears throat> now start with a little bit of uh, a background to set up the scene. And let's start with a little bit of introduction. Um, we are in the 5G area. I'm not going to go into the details of the 5G as such, but it is in the context of 5G. So I would say this is the overview picture and uh, what we are going to focus right now uh, in this particular webinar, this session, is the RAN, meaning the, the base stations that are controlled um, with, with some external applications and, and, and the way it is approached within ORAN Alliance and this openness in, in the RAN architecture. 
so we are going to see also a little bit of N2 and 3 interfaces to the control plane and user plane of 5G core, but we are going to focus on uh, NG run as such. Uh, of course, within, as you will see, within Open Run, there is also, it's also defined for uh, the 4G or LTE base station. So we are going also to see that block. But anyway, it's a part as well of, of the NG run. So now uh, when we are focusing getting into the open run, what's currently happening? So as you might already have known regarding the basics of open run, we are going from the traditional um, telco approach where we have a run being the black box and, and all the interfaces within that are closed and subject to uh, being um, in the hand of, of one. Um, vendor onto the open run where firstly we are splitting uh, the different functions uh, and they can, could be developed or deployed by different vendors like CU or central unit, DU distributed unit, RU remote unit. We are going to see that uh, over and over throughout this, uh, this session. And the important part of that is the uh, orange box here, or the run intelligent controller being something extracted from the run um, towards openness in terms of um, uh, the management of the network, being that um, um, radio resource management or self-organizing networks functions that are um, basically re responsible for managing radio resources and the operation of the network. This is where the AI and the whole things related to automation of the radio network comes into play. So why are we going into that direction? Um, those are the promises of Open Run. Uh, basically, disaggregation. Um, we are disaggregating the functions of the different uh, parts of the system. Um, open ecosystem, because we will have different actors um, like CUDU, um, vendors but also rig vendors but also x app developers as you will see this is basically the concept where where uh, the new players come into the open interfaces basically mean that there will it will be possible to um, uh, to have an open the truly open interfaces uh, to to allow having those in uh, interoperability between different vendors the coupling hardware from software, so all of that, as you will also see, can be virtualized, of course, beyond the, the real hardware that needs to be there, uh, being the, the, the actual um, uh, RF uh, generators. And intelligent management, this is what comes into play with the run intelligent controller that is, as you will see, then split into two different elements. Um, now you don't have to worry about all of the abbreviations. Russell has already sent you um, within an email. There is a lot of them, and um, that's just to show you that there are uh, there and there will be in a, in a presentation. But basically, it's um, it's it's from one side we are used to that within the telco domain. On the other hand, uh, the run uh, the open run an open run alliance and all that nomenclature is pretty new. So that might be useful for you as well. And with that, I would like to get into the uh, ORAN itself or open run. Uh, ORAN with the dash is uh, defined by ORAN Alliance. We are going to see also those different actors later on. So how are we approaching that? What are the different elements? Um, this is pretty much a simplified protocol stack for the radio interface between the base station and the user, um, where we have um, the lower layer uh, processing than, for example, a scheduler and the MAC layer. Then we have layer two protocols like radio link control and then packet data convergence protocol uh, treating the whole packets and then at the end we have radio resource control controlling all of the different um, parameters and controlling the radio con condition uh, the radio connection with a particular user on the other hand in the lower part we have the user plane and the processing of the packets with the sdap uh, being the new protocol developed for um for 5g new radio but basically, the first important part is that we are splitting the, the control processing from the user plane processing um, already here. 
Now, if we are getting into the open run as such, um, those are the entities defined by Oran Alliance. They are called the E2 nodes. All of them are E2 nodes. And we will see how that could be also uh, defined in a flexible way so that we can have uh, E2 nodes shared as a different, um, let's say, combination of those. But basically, they have the O, uh, meaning they are defined or aligned with the ORAN Alliance uh, specifications. We, within 3GPP, we also have DU, we have also CU being the central unit, and we have also CUCP and CUUB being control plane and user plane. The important part of that is that, of course, that needs to comply with 3GPP specification, but the O added to this uh, is there so that we can um, comply with ORAN Alliance specifications, specifically that they allow and have the functionalities uh, needed by ORAN Alliance. We are going to see what exactly they are. Um, then they are also connected to the 5G core, so AMF and UPF. Um, and as you can see, this is the user plane split and control plane, uh, user plane control plane split. So they are connected to the core network, but we are not going to touch this part too much uh, in this webinar. What is important is that we have those uh, entities defined within uh, Oran Alliance with the split, lower layer split uh, within the physical layer, you know, where some part is um, done at the radio unit and the other part at the distributed unit. Now getting farther and more importantly to the functions of Open RAN and the already mentioned uh, radio intelligent controller, but it is, it is split onto uh, two parts. One is near the so-called near real-time run intelligent controller, and the other one is non-real-time uh, run intelligent controller. We're going to also discuss those differences later on, but the important part is that um, they basically um, or ORAN defines those two entities and defines interfaces of those. Uh, towards the E2 nodes. So that this is the, the O coming up here. So in order to be compliant with the ORAN specifications or the DU to be compliant with that, it needs to support the E2 interface and the whole, uh, let's say, procedural aspect related to that. Um, and if we are speaking about the automation and radio resource management, we have the higher layer one, the non-real-time RIC, um, being, let's say, a self-organizing network function alike. We are going to see the details of that, but basically it's something like that. It's it's longer uh, parameter exchange uh, or um, uh, reshaping of the, of the, let's say, uh, changing the parameters for the radio network, whereas the near real-time run intelligent controller is dealing with radio resource management. But those uh, slower functions like traffic steering, like interference management, like mobility management, uh, like spectrum management, and things like that. Uh, whereas, of course, we have real-time radio source management. It, it doesn't disappear, and it's not controlled by the RIC. It's still in the MAC domain, so the real-time processing and the real-time resource allocation is still there, and it's um, it's within the um, ODU. So we have a real-time control loop for automation of the radio resources assignment, near real-time and non-real-time rig. Um, throughout that webinar, we will be using the small n with RT versus the big n or large n or capital N with um, non-real-time to just differentiate between those two. Because they are... Com um, uh, called RIC, but it's split into two different functions. Uh, now let's take a look a little bit closer to those entities and getting the full picture. We already spoke about the blue things here and we spoke about those um, orange things here, but there is more to that. So the entities defined within ORAN also include O Cloud. So basically the cloud computing platform comprising um, the nodes to host the ORAN functions, the blue ones, uh, and also the RIGs, um, as well as supporting functions, basically the, the cloud platform. 
And then we have the logical nodes hosting different uh, layers, as already mentioned in the previous um, uh, in the previous uh, picture, um, like um, a lower layer, physical, um, a lower physical layer, then higher physical layer, and then radio link control Mac and so on and so forth, and then the central unit split into user plane and control plane. Um, now, near real-time rig and non-real-time rig uh, are also logical nodes. One enabling the actual near real-time control and optimization of the run via fine-grained uh, data collection. So it's getting the, the data and then performs processing and then controls the, 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 the actual data processing within the, the base station. Um, and the non-real-time rig that um, includes AI ML workflows and policy-based guidance or applications. So it's basically setting up the, the policies towards the near-real-time rig. We're going to see that at the end, how exactly does that mean? What is an actual policy and how that impacts the, the operation itself? So stay um, to, till the end of the webinar, it will, be, it will get in clearer what that exactly means. Now, within near real time rig, there is an important part called an X app or an X apps, which means a set of applications that are designed to run on non uh, or near real time rig. Um, they basically are independent of the near real time rig and they might be provided by third party. So near real-time rig provider, but also can be coming from different vendors specifying and focusing on specific aspects, like for example, interference management or mobility management for different use cases. And finally, we have the thing called SMO. So um, service management and orchestration being a system supporting the orchestration of the whole thing below. It includes also non-real-time rig to control the near real-time rig, but it also is responsible for, uh, let's say, setting up the things uh, below. And we are going to see those different interfaces and the messages and the things that are relating to, to the exchange between those different uh, entities. So those are the uh, building blocks of open uh, RAN from the ORAN Alliance uh, specifications. Now, we already mentioned ORAN, we already mentioned 3GPP, but who are other entities that are relevant here and what are the different relations between them? So first of all, we have 3GPP already mentioned that defines uh, the standard to the architecture uh, for 5G and the radio interface and the operation of the radio network, core network, and so on and so forth. Uh, within our context of the radio access network RAN, we have the MANO being management and orchestration, also CU, CP, CU, UP already mentioned and discussed, the DU, so distributed unit, and the interfaces E1, F1, uh, C, F1U. We are going to see them also when we get to the, the architecture point. The important thing is that those are identified within the ORAN Alliance specifications and definitions. Um, and then we have the, the famous ORAN Alliance. Um, and of course, if we are getting from 3GPP standards to the ORAN Alliance specifications, some of that getting into, but also the other features like core network user equipment and other things that are not strictly related to RAN. So of course, that relation is not one-to-one. -one. Whereas uh, ORAN Alliance specifies the entities that we already mentioned, so SMO, non-real-time rig, near-real-time rig, and the interfaces that we're going to see. So A1, E2, O1, O2, open front hall, and also the way the uh, DU is split into DU and remote um, radio unit, or the remote or radio unit uh, within that file layer that already was already mentioned. And then important also player in that area is um, uh, the ONF, so Open Networking Foundation, uh, whereas we have the um, SD-RAN projects, they, they have established the SD-RAN project, um, so software-defined RAN. And again, the ORAN Alliance specifications 
are input to the ONF SDRAN, but not all of them are taken into account. The um, ONF SDRAN is focusing on building the, the exemplar platform for uh, ORAN based uh, design choices, and this is called Micronos uh, RIG. So they are focusing on building an open source RIG, and below they uh, will be using um, the, for example, ORAN specified. Um, uh, emulators to, to basically allow um, XAP developers to test their solutions and allow also um, operators to test the different uh, XAPs for the same purpose. We're going to see, see that a little bit later on. And then uh, one important player in that field also is a Telecom Infra Project or a TIP, and specifically within the area of um, our RAN domain, and even more specifically, within the area of um, radio resource management, there is um, RAN intelligence and automation subgroup that uh, is aiming to use that uh, Micronos rig to develop and deploy AI-based XAPs for RAN use cases like self-organizing networks, radio resource management, and so on. So summing up, from one left side, we have the reference design, uh, the architecture, uh, and the interfaces and nodes. Um, there is an exemplar platform and there is a use case development where the operators are setting up, for example, priorities and having the possibility to, to, to set the scene um, and having an environment to test those different um, solutions. Of course, there are more and there are more will be uh, happening. For example, ORAN Policy Coalition to promote those policies uh, within the governments and um, standardization bodies to adapt the ORAN concept. And um, also other entities like cloud platform providers for interoperability testing, X app stores and things like that, uh, similar to what we have like um, um, uh, Google Play or App Store with X App Store, where the different entities and, and uh, the software vendors will be able to provide those uh, X apps for, uh, let's say, choosing by the operator to, to run in a specific um, rigs. So that would be, uh, let's say, one of the perspectives related to the different um, entities. Now we are focusing in that uh, particular webinar or ORAN Alliance. So there are two more things I would like to mention here. One is um, ORAN Alliance virtual exhibition. I encourage you to go there uh, where you can find the different demonstrations, videos from the solutions from different vendors and um, use cases. Um, they are also hosting the ORAN Open Summit. It was like two days ago where, where they uh, basically uh, we're discussing or showing to the public uh, what are the plans for the next developments. Within that also, there is the so-called ORAN Software Community or OSC, being the collaboration between ORAN Alliance and Linux Foundation to support the creation of RAN software in terms of, um, or in a way that it's open. Um, currently available software that you can download from the ORAN software community webpage um, is so-called Sherry re release from uh, December 2020, but they are also planning uh, the next, the D release um, somewhere in the middle of uh, 2021. So what kind of projects do they have within that? You, you can download the whole software. It, it's um, it's there, you can download and check what's inside and also um, try to run it on your on your platform. Um, they are developing pretty much all the different entities that were mentioned within the ORAN architecture. So ODU high, ODU low, um, then central unit, so reference implementation of the specific protocols and entities and uh, interfaces between them. The near real-time rig, of course, a platform to support XAPs. The non-real-time rig um, to support the setting up the policies and the interface of A1. And then um, some open source sample XAPs. Um, so basically, uh, you can have a hello world XAP uh, to be run on non-real-time rig, where you can check out how it works and what are the different communication between the different entities. And then the SMO. 
On top of that, there are also, let's say, a cross layer um, projects like simulation, integration and testing and infrastructure um, elements so that you can combine the whole or an architecture, uh, let's say yourself. Um, if you are interested in the details, I encourage you to go to the Oran Alliance uh, white paper to get a sketch and then to the specific specification based on which uh, some part of, of this uh, material has been prepared. Also the, the cherry release of the software. Uh, on the other hand, uh, the ONF uh, presentation on the SDRAN and white paper as, as well as um, joining those. Um, so those are the, the resources recommended to get into the specifics of, um, of the open run. And ONF also is working very closely uh, with the ORAN Alliance. Uh, now, those are the selected ORAN Alliance specifications. I'm not going to go into the details of that, don't worry. It's just to show you the, uh, the, the naming of them and then what are the different contents. From those specifications, the materials in this webinar has been um, prepared. Uh, so we took um, a little bit from here and there to make sure that we uh, basically provide, uh, let's say, uh, right nomenclature and the right, uh, let's say, places and the functions that are uh, defined by, by Open Run Alliance. So that would be it regarding the introduction to ORAN. And now, um, we are getting to part number two, where we are going to discuss a little bit more details in the architecture and then in the um, in the rig. Okay, so that's a big picture of ORAN architecture. Um, we already discussed the CU, DU, um, and so on, and near real-time rig, X apps, and all cloud SMO non real-time rig. So we're not going to repeat that. The important thing is that the, the blue ones are defined by FreeGPP with um, an input from uh, ORAN Alliance, or they are built around the ORAN Alliance to support those different interfaces, uh, as well as the interfaces like E1, F1, and of course the NG towards the core network of 5G, and also OE node B being the let's say, the LTE version that is also supported by ORAN. And uh, then the orange ones relate to what is specified by uh, ORAN Alliance. Um, now, in terms of the interfaces, if we are speaking about A1 interface, so from non-real-time RIC to near-real-time RIC, um, we have policy and enrichment info, ML, so machine learning, model management, and policy setting towards near real time rig. And from the other hand, the near real time rig exchange with the non real time rig, uh, the policy feedback. So, how that policy that you, my dear non real time rig, provided um, works in, um, in the network. Now, E2 is the important um, uh, interface because it actually touches and gets into the specific entities within the base station. So from one side, we can control what is happening within that base station. So from near real-time rig, uh, monitor, suspend, override, control via policies towards the, the lower layers or towards the actual entities that execute functions. And from the other hand, we get the data collection and feedback from those entities. Um, now we have the FCAPS um, uh, interfaces. So the, orchestra the typical orchestration functions like configuration, or reconfiguration, or reg registration, security, and then performance of the actual entities like the, 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 the hardware or virtual functions. And that's all one interface. Uh, you can see that it's uh, getting to each of that um, entity here, except to the ORU because O1 is FFS, so far far the study uh, for um, remote unit uh, or radio unit, but they have the open front hall M plane, so management plane for that as well, being pretty much doing the, the same things for the for the for the lower layer of physical. And then O2 interface, pretty much same, 
so F cups and and uh, platform resources management for the uh, underlying um, cloud computing platform. Now, what is important to mention here, also mentioned before, are the control loops. So the first control loop, the, the real-time control loop below 10 milliseconds is the actual scheduler that is inside the ODU and that is not subject to what the ORAN Alliance is specifying or can it can control that via policies. We are going to see that um, exactly in our example at the end, but it's pretty much uh, doing their thing inside the ODU. So it's not open. And then we have near real time, meaning near real time in terms of timing is more than 10 milliseconds and less than one second. And here we have functions like interference management. So setting up the different resource blocks to be allocated or the number of resources for specific, let's say slice or specific user type or things like that, or the traffic steering mobility management saying basically which user should hand over from what cell to other cell or to change the um, cell or add a cell or add a, a new node to, to the resource pool. And then finally, we have non real time functions, uh, like already mentioned, self organizing networks, uh, like mobility load balancing, or pretty much mobility load balancing can get into near real time as well. But things like um, orchestration or controlling the lower layer functions um, or the near real time leak via, via policies. And what are those policies, how we can use them, it will be um, in, the, in the next section. So as you can see, we have the, let's say, E2 nodes, the, the blue ones then near real time rig with X apps and then non real time rig with SMO together with the O cloud. Now, how that can be deployed? Do we have to have all of those different entities separated? Do we have to have different OCU, o, OUP uh, and so on and so forth? So from one side, the implementation option is that they are disaggregated. So we have all those different entities and then near real time rig and then non real time rig and SMO have to have connection to those via O1 interface and E2 interface to each of that node. But we can also do differently. So we can aggregate them in different ways. So for example, we can have an E2 node that basically consists of ODU, OCU, CPU, P, and then we only have one E2 interface. So that there is a flexibility there, but the price to be paid for that implementation is that you have to have, um, of course, um, the way to identify the internal node that you want to control. What I mean by that will be shown in a second. Now, what we can aggregate that in a different ways. So there are only selected ones from the ORAN specifications. Like we can also combine the central unit with the near real time rig, and then we might have all nodes integrated. So we only have a one interface from the external entity, and then near real time rig can be also built together with the uh, actual base station. Um, device. So we also can have a distributed implementation as we had in um, LTE uh, case. All right, so let's now get to the near real time rig. Uh, this is where we are focusing on this webinar, and this is where the use cases then will be discussed. So the internal architecture. Now let's zoom in to the near real time rig and see what are the some of the specifics within that. So of course we need to have the A1 termination and E2 termination towards the, let's say northbound and southbound. And then internally except X apps, of course we need to handle them in such in a certain way. So we have um, a so-called shared data layer together with the database where we have read write of the radio access network so the E2 nodes information, as well as from the UE side. Um, we also have X app subscription management so that we might have different X apps. We put one of them and then it needs to be identified somehow. And then there needs to be some interaction between them um, set up. And then we have for that purpose, we have the message interaction between 
the internal functions. Um, so we have, uh, let's say, a bus where we can, let's say, provide, for example, the different parameters to the same XAP or to the other entities within the near real time rig. Um, and then we might, we need to have uh, the, some kind of conflict mitigation to uh, resolve some overlapping requests. So, for example, we have one X up being the mobility load balancing and another one, the pretty well known uh, thing from, from the past, um, mobility robustness optimization or traffic steering. In that way, what it, they all have the same impact on the actual user and the network. So they basically say, please move that user from that cell to that cell. But they might do that for different reasons. For example, mobility load balancing might do that because um, there is an overload in that cell. So we want to move that user to another cell to offload some traffic. Whereas in the same time, the other uh, X up, uh, I don't know, uh, the mobility robustness optimization can uh, say, well, uh, there is a lot of handovers that have failed on that area. So we might switch the boundary so that the same user that just moved from that cell to that cell moves back. And we will have a ping pong uh, if we don't have the conflict mitigation function that basically tries to look what is happening in the network, what are the potential action to be taken down there in the uh, E2 nodes, and then tries to align them somehow. And then there are supporting functions like FCAPs for the X apps and the internal um, aspects and security schemes for for the X up. So that would be basically the internal architecture of the uh, near real time rig. Now, how we can deploy that? We already saw a little bit of that um, in the previous um, section, but there might be different implementation options. So, for example, we might have a centralized near real time rig where the whole G node B or E node B or several G node Bs or several CU, CPs and DUs are handled by the same near real time rig. So we basically get all the measurements from all the neighboring cells and all the neighboring users uh, have being in a certain area to a single near real time rig. Basically, it means that we collect all the data and then have a, can have a single um, action to be taken having a holistic view. Or we might have a distributed near real time rig where each uh, function, each E2 node can be controlled by its own near real time rig. Basically, it means that we might have a specific near real time rigs for each of the E2 nodes that are handled or composed within um, one near real time rig entity, but with separate functions or separate near real time rigs uh internally now so what is important here is that uh, the oran alliance specifications allows us to have uh, that flexibility we might combine the different entities together or split them apart have a centralized view or have a specific aspect here so that that is um of course an advantage the disadvantage of that is that we need to have uh, that implemented or having the possibility to have that implemented in the e2 um, uh, interface uh, that is responsible for uh, providing measurements and controlling certain functions. We need to know which actual E2 node are we uh, talking to. So that one of the things that will be then propagated in the, in the next section um, of our webinar uh, is the key performance measurement um, function that needs to be in each of the E2 nodes. Now, in that case, we have near real-time rig that has three different E2 nodes. Each of them is different. So we have E, um, CU, CP, CU, UP, uh, and DU. Uh, um, they are on a different, let's say, logical entities. And each of them need to have that function, so key performance measurement function. And this is actually, that is a free GPP defined DU with key performance measurement function, as an example giving it the O inside uh, the name. And that example might be that it goes over E2 interface, providing the ODU message like a number of available PRBs, number of used PRBs, number of users handled, and so on and so forth. And then, of course, the um, integrated or 
uh, encapsulated uh, transparent container for other uh, measurements. And let's take a look on, as an example of that. So ODU measurement within the 5G, um, let's say, standalone architecture. So uh, we have the performance measurement container where we might have, well, we have a single E2 interface. It might be include all of the different entities or a single one. So we have uh, ODU performance measurement container, OCU, CP performance container and the UP performance container. But we are looking into specific ODU as in the previous example. What is inside here? Now here they will be different because they treat or they relate to different aspects of, of um, uh, that uh, connection. So for example, ODU, as you remember, it has inside scheduler. So it deals with physical resource blocks. So what do we have here? We have the cells that it covers. It, we have the number of PRBs, 273. That's a number from the free GPP specifications related to the, the bandwidth and how we distribute that bandwidth. And then we have ODU measurement format for 5GC or for EPC. So for standalone version of 5G and non-standalone version uh, where the, uh, the G node B is connected to the evolved packet core. Now, if we are focusing as in a previous picture on the ODU for 5GC, um, we might see again an encapsulated thing where we have for example slice id or 5qi so 5g quality of service indicator um, that will be different if we have uh, epc connected so so in that way we are encapsulating certain deployment depending on um, uh, or having the specifics in a bigger entity so from um, an, a general PM container, we get to the open container, and then we get to the one that is related to specific deployment of 5G. And in such a way, we are handling those different elements. So uh, we, we'll get into those specific parameters later on in the, in the use case uh, discussion. So uh, keep them in mind. All right, but before we get into specific uh, use case, Oran has specified a set of um, use cases with phase one and split into phase one and phase two, most likely due to the some kind of prioritization and most likely by the operators. So what operators are, are let's say, putting or pushing for certain use cases, they are mentioned here and they are all discussed in the Oran Alliance white paper. So not, I'm not going to discuss all of them, just focus on the uh, different, um, let's say, aspects of those. So we have, for example, low cost run white box hardware or traffic steering that we are going to focus or quality of experience optimization or massive MIMO or quality of uh, service based resource allocation. And then in phase two, we have run sharing or slicing or um, basically a handover or mobility management for different use cases like V2X or, or for drones. So we can see that they are both either specific for V2X, for example, for uh, unmanned uh, aerial vehicles or very general like traffic steering because it might be for um, a different use cases or slices treated, um, uh, let's say, with a different options of, of how we control that. Uh, what we are going to focus right now is um, the traffic steering scheme. So let's start with what actually traffic steering is. Um, a traffic steering basically is how to steer the traffic. And in the uh, mobile networks case, it means basically what connection or to what cell the, or to what base station the user is connected. Uh, and it might be more general. So if we have multiple radio access technologies like 4, 4G, 5G, Wi-Fi and others, so we need to decide which, which radio access technology then to which cell and then, for example, which band and in that band we might have multiple component carriers so which component carriers and of course we have dual connectivity um, so it might be a decision that we need to have that primary base station and secondary base station connected for that user and then of course traffic so it might be traffic type like um, voice connection versus 
MBB connection, uh, it might be they might be treated by different uh, cells. So wh why are we handling that? W what's the problem here? So the typical traffic steering mechanisms treat all the UEs in the same way, and we take the average values, um, and and they are typically um, are limited to seller selection or handover parameters, basically where is the boundary of the base station and then based on that uh, of, of the cell and then based on that when the user moves it is just handed over to another cell but if they don't they, they don't take into account that this is a v2x user and it might not need to be switched to another cell and it need to be treated in a different way and, and this is specifically a challenge within 5g where we have slicing where we have lte with the 5g when we have standalone non-standalone version heterogeneous networks, different types of cells, and uh, thousands of different frequency bands. So uh, traffic steering is a very important uh, use case. It's also been treated by ONF, and it's also been treated by ORAN Alliance uh, within those uh, example XAPs. So what, what do we want to have? So what, what's the purpose of that particular use case is that we want to have a customization possibility Firstly, from the operator's perspective, so each operator might have different strategy for a specific type of user. Um, and secondly, depending on type of uh, the service or, a, a, I don't know, um, having um, a, a different um, slice assigned to a different user, we might treat them in a different way. So different use cases might have uh, different ways we treat them. Um, so we want to have the possibility to allow flexibly or configure the different optimization policies. Um, and we might leverage ML to enable intelligent uh, traffic steering control. So what is specified um, to, or what are the potential required data that we would like to have to, to take that particular decision? So for example, the typical one that are used in the all typical traffic steering mechanisms, RSRP, RSRQ, all the measurements, that we typically have. Then from the other hand, we have connection mobility handover statistics, cell load statistics, and um, UE performance statistics. So if you gather them all, we have a lot of data from a different sources treating or uh, saying a different things that then collectively can be used to have a specific user having a specific, um, let's say, treatment and specific behavior um, uh, that has its own unique um, uh, allocation. Now, what what is the re realization? First of all, we need to, to have those two entities, right? No, non real time rig and near real time rig, um, where through, for example, learning, we can learn that this is, I don't know, a street. The users are moving here, and the, if they are a car and have specific um, slice type. Um, they might be moving um, and then they might be treated one way and the learning mechanism can basically say to the X app controlling the handover that it does that in a certain way for one type of user and does it in a different way uh, for another user. So let us now look into the specific node responsibilities within the ORAN Alliance application or um, handling of that use case and uh, that uh, architecture that we already mentioned. So from top, um, the SMO or rather the non-real-time rig defines and updates the policies to guide the behavior of uh, the TSX app that is sitting down in the near real-time rig. Uh, performs, of course, the, uh, the statistical analysis of the data um, and uh, provides uh, policies and enrichment um, information like RF fingerprints that are uh, basically then um, seen and, and collected also separately. Now, then we have, um, so, so from that part where we are basically learning and then setting up some policies over A1, we are sending the A1 policy. So declarative or non-declarative declarative policy to enable uh, that implementation within the near real-time rig and additional information, for example, that um, RF fingerprint saying, for example, if the user is in that particular place and if it, their, its measurements are like that, 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 and that, then that would be a specific policy. So that um, the X up in the near real-time rig 
can interpret and enforce that policy for a specific user. Uh, it might be a little bit difficult to understand right now, but we are going to look in a specific example uh, in a second. So we are going to look into how exactly that might work. And over E2 interface, after the decision that, for example, that user needs to move from that cell to that cell, is going over E2 interface via the control messages. And E2 nodes are the ones that are collecting the data and then executing certain actions. Now, so let's get down to specifics. Now, what are the TS policies that the non real time rig can send to near real time rig? Uh, well, that's a traffic steering policy example from directly from the ORAN specifications of A1 uh, application protocol, where what we might find here is that, um, yeah, we might do it per UE, per slice ID, so for specific uh, type of uh, slice or for specific quality of service ID, so for specific service, or we might do it for a certain uh, cell ID. So, so it it is flexible. We might do that differently for different cells. And then um, on the other hand, uh, we might have um, for a specific cell that, and for a specific user or a group of user saying that that user shall use or that service shall use that uh, cell or should avoid that different cell or should be forbidden for that user that it should not reuse uh, or should not be moved to that cell. And this is kind of, let's say, um, a description that you firstly uh, might easily understand what is happening here. And you might control that uh, based on some measurement later on. So the example, the, the particular example here, uh, for example, we have a UE ID 855. And then we have TSP, which is traffic steering policy, uh, cell ID list um, uh, 39 and 40, so exact uh, cell ID. And the preference for that particular UE is prefer, or for 81, 92, and 3, it's forbidden, and so on and so forth. So it might be slightly, uh, that we actually tell that that UE should not be moved to that cell it's forbidden for him, it should only use the cells that are mentioned directly here based on some measurements and so on. So now, even more specific example. So assume we have a scenario, it's also taken from the, um, from the ORAN uh, uh, specification, where you have a UE or several UEs, um, and we have a macro base station that controls two different cells, cell A and cell B. They are on low bands, so let's say 800 megahertz, 700 megahertz. They have 20 megahertz bands or 10 megahertz bands, so narrow band, uh, and allow low la latency. On the other hand, we have uh, high speed cells, um, or I know high speed, but uh, with wider bands, um, but on higher frequency, there is a lot of resources and we can very fastly transmit to uh, UE uh, the data that it needs. Now, so those are typically treated as MBB cells. We want to transmit certain data and then um, it needs to be a huge pipe of, of, of data to be able to transmit. Whereas for voice calls, we would rather not have handover every uh, 10 meters, but we would rather have a single larger base station, a lot, very little resources, but the user is having um, a good, uh, reliable connection here. And also for control plane, we would rather have a macro cell and then small cell as an additional resources to, to handle our MBB um, uh, connection. So that is a specific UE configuration. It belongs to the slice ID one, it has two connections, voice connection, which is defined by 3GPP in 5QI1 and 9 for MBB connection. And it basically enters that area of those four cells. So now how it exactly works in if we take into account the, the, the ORAN scenario. So on top of the everything, non-real-time rig, the slower thing, understands the requirements and characteristics of that services. And it decides that, well, we have voice connection and control plane connection. So we put it in low band. 
either by measurements or by machine learning or by operator setting. It needs to be covered by, let's say, the B cell. It's, it's the largest cell and uh, that will be a P cell. So primary cell, so the one that is, uh, the user is connected. While MBB connection, we preferably go to higher frequency bands covered by small cell C or D, whatever, it doesn't matter. The, this is preferable cells. Um, and because of it's consuming a lot of resources, we would rather avoid um, low bands. Um, this is then sent to near real time rig, so sends policies for different services um, uh, and so on. We are going to see that and for all of the uh, cells of concern. So what, what happens here? To achieve that behavior that we have before uh, seen, we need to have two policies sent from non real time rig to near real time rig. So firstly, we are steering voice services to be served by cell B, basically saying um, for slice ID one, QoS ID one, we are setting the cell B with preference shall, and that's a primary cell. Whereas um, we might have um, for the for the voice also cell B, and it's not primary, so it might be secondary cell. Whereas for policy two, for MBB. Uh, it's again the UE1, slice ID1, quality of service ID9. In that case, it should avoid cell B and A because it would consume a lot of resources and it should prefer cell C and D, basically being allocated the resources where they are. Uh, and then non real time rig needs to locate that UE and enforce that policy and actually tell the UE to do that. So, what's happening later? Basically, the control message for that UE says, Please hand over to cell B for a P cell and add um, cell A for voice. So it's handled here. And then add a secondary cell for the second uh, uh, service. So now the ending, uh, the, the end story is that the UE has connection to two base stations and having service being transmitted to it from different cells that are uh, treated for that specific service. All right, so that's, uh, let's say, uh, from the standard. Now, what we have done is we have implemented a similar scenario and tried to enforce uh, certain policies via X apps that we developed. Uh, so that scenario is as follows. Again, we have a base station with two frequency bands, and then we have uh, some, some small cells around. Um, when we have two types of users, the voice UE and MBB UE, so a gray one and a black one, they are distributed randomly on that area. And then we would like to check what are the different policies have, what different policies might have impact on that uh, particular, um, on that particular cell or that, or that particular, um, let's say, network. So the architecture is as follows. We have a macro site having two cells and then a lot of small cells with, um, again, each of them has two cells on the two different frequencies. And then on top of that, we have rig that is controlling all of them at once. So that's a centralized one. And then we have the actual cell allocation or cell association X up as we call it. And it's an actual traffic steering. So it steers the traffic to specific cell which means it, it's uh, basically having connection to all of them and, and distributing users accordingly. So now how it operates is very simple. Um, it basically measures the, 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 the signal from each of the base station. And if the policy is default, it allocates the one that is closer or with strongest signal. But we might treat them uh, specifically if it's a voice user, we move it to the macro side. If it's an MBB user, it's close enough, we move it to the small cell. So it's pretty simple in terms of concept. Now, the API looks as follows. We have certain parameters, input parameters, like the measurements and then the UE class association policy. Um, and then we have certain policies. For example, um, uh, like a default policy, which we actually don't have any preference for type of cell. Uh, another is offload, so we have a preference, for example, for the voice UE to avoid Pico cells and um, MBB UEs to prefer Pico cells and so on and so forth. Exactly the ones that we saw in the uh, specifications. 
and we might have two different vendors that have uh, that are allocating different weights to those uh, preferences so there is another degree of freedom and by that we can basically have the same preference like avoid but it has a different meaning so now how it exactly works so if we have a policy default basically meaning if you are close to a base station it doesn't matter what types of cell is it we basically allocate you so we have voice UEs on the left hand side and then these are the basically areas that the users are connected when they are voice users. So you might see that the MBB users, voice users, pretty much treated the same way, independently of where, with which type of the cell it is and which type of the service is it, uh, basically they are allocated to the same cells. If it's a voice user and it's here, it's also uh, connected to that genode B. If it's um, a MBB user, it's also connected here. But if we apply policy offload, which is just sending from the non-real-time rig to uh, near real-time rig, we already have that difference. So MBB UEs are rather moved and forced towards the Gnode Bs, uh, whereas the voice users pretty much are moved to the macro side. So we are separating uh, those types of users. Now, how does that look in a performance perspective? Um, here we have um, to, that topology. So four small cells, one macro site, and the users here. We can see that those are connected to the small cells. That's uh, bit rates, and that's a target um, performance. But what we can see is if it's default, uh, basically we just don't care what type of user is it. We might have a very strong outage for the MVB UEs because they need to consume a lot of resources and they are all connected to the macro base station. Uh, whereas if we apply that policy offload, what that means is that we basically um, decrease that outage by half because we force some users to move there. And it doesn't actually matter here that actual performance. What is important here is that by just sending a certain uh, policy and having that same algorithm, we might have a different uh, operations. What is important here also to see is that there is still outage. Now, if we have those different policies, this is the default one, the offloading one, and then separating one, we might go um, towards uh, having less and less outage of that user. But what is uh, more important is that if we add another XAPS doing slightly different things, Ha, uh, that, that's one more result in a time domain. So what happens here is that we have um, a situation where um, we have certain requirement, we have certain outage, and then 10% of the UEs change service from voice to MBB. And then over time, it seems that the outage is getting bigger. Um, so after some time, the policy is changing from, let's say, a learning mechanism in non-real-time rig. It says, oops, we have uh, now a little bit, let's say, higher outage. It increases over a certain threshold. So it changes the policy. And then we are getting towards less outage. And it's even less than before. So in that way, we are trying to do that over time. So we are looking on the performance measurement. We are getting higher than changing the policy. Uh, over A2 in A1 interface and then moving some of the users out. Um, and even if we do not explicitly say, please use the offload mechanism, it will do that automatically. Now, what if we add more XAPs? That, that's the, the, let's say, the final part. Uh, I don't want to, to extend the, the timing uh, uh, too much anymore. But uh, so let's say that's our uh, situation right now we have a cell association x up that actual traffic steering but in the same case for the same use case we might add some more um, x ups for example spectrum management x up explained in a second and we can add resource allocation x up so they are separate x ups doing different things but they are all related to that specific uh, use case and by steering specific um, policies we might have a different meaning here so the sm xap basically what it means is it basically prefers uh, that frequency or that frequency 
um, based on I don't know uh, some kind of uh, pricing. For example, the the lower band is is uh, higher priced than the the upper band, and so on. Then the CA X up we already mentioned, so we have certain allocation. Now we might change that allocation based on some priority. And then the resource allocation X up so basically controlling the behavior of the scheduler. So we already have the users allocated to certain cell and uh, to, to certain frequency, and then we might have a different bandwidth allocated so if we have uh, voice users um, in small cell they are um, allocated less resources than the mbb user so we are basically forcing the mbb user to have higher bandwidth if it's in a, in a small cell uh, so spectrum management band it's uh, basically having either we are focusing on cheap bands we want to go to higher frequency if possible or performance we don't care about if it's cheap or not meaning that the lower frequency like 800 megahertz is, is higher cost we only care about the performance itself um, and the other x up that we um, added is resource allocation x up basically controlling the uh, scheduler for example it prefers macro sites we add we give more resources to that um, cell if the user is mbb and if it's in that cell it gets less or more resources so we can control the number of resources not the actual resource allocation by the scheduler but um, just control um, the, the preference and of course the different vendors that or the different operators might set a different policies to that uh, particular algorithm so what happens here, if we remember, we have a policy association offload, meaning we allocate more users to um, more MBB users to small cells. Uh, we have certain outage, uh, 0.3 or something. If we now add the policy allocation re reservation that we just mentioned, we don't have an outage. Oh, of course, that's a specific um, uh, scenario here, but we with additional X up. Um, we are basically achieving our result where the end goal is we pretty much want to decrease uh, or increase the performance, decrease the outage. And then we might do that by adding X ups and by having that modularity, we just have three. It's still the same uh, architecture. We just add another X up and it's controlled by a certain policy. So to the summary, because it's uh, already been an hour. Uh, so to the summary. Using that ORAN approach uh, allows to add intelligence from external entities. So we might have this IX apps. We have uh, already uh, getting uh, the control out of the, the actual base station. Uh, we might control the run behavior by declarative policies, which are pretty obvious if you read them. It, it, it's not, uh, let's say, uh, some um, variable called, I don't know, um, x2245 it's it's just said that traffic steering policy for that cell and that user is that or that you should avoid or prefer it's very simple uh, it allows to combine combine various applications to realize certain objectives so we focus on certain objective a traffic steering use case but there might be different uh, x apps um, and then it allows hierarchical and modular approach to resource management. So we have those hierarchy, so upper layer, middle layer, lower layer, and we separate the concerns by, by that. And we have a um, flexible and modular radio access network as we saw where we can combine the E2 um, nodes or have them separate. Uh, so that's it. Uh, thank you for attention. And uh, thank you for um, being here so long um, I hope uh, you enjoyed it and also I'd like to thank again Russell for for having me here and for having that opportunity and one final word before I give it up to, to Russell uh, if you're interested in those topics and other topics related to to, to wireless uh, you can check out our blog and also you can subscribe to to our newsletter. There will be more and more things related to Oran um, coming up.